I sat on a worn oak stool, staring intently at a crackling fire which stared back at me at ease. A chime of a clock woke me from my slumber. A chilled pint of black in the grasp of my hand, the touch sent a shiver down my spine, which woke a sleeping dog close by. How are you getting on, team? Now that was a little poem I wrote about three weeks ago while I was sitting on the jacks with a little bit of homesick upon me. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And how are you getting on? Welcome to the podcast. On this week's podcast, I caught up with my good friend Clanny Moore. Clanny, among other things, is a final year PhD student up in the University of Limerick. And a fun fact about Kalani is he's a dab hand at the Finnish game Molki. Molki, in essence, is a century-old throwing game where the players use a wooden pin to try and knock over wooden pins that stand about, I would say, 10 feet away from you. It is a fantastically competitive game and many a cup of gold was spilt over it. Jesus, that soft melody from the guitar is kind of undermining the idea, isn't it? Sorry about that. Let's get into the podcast. <laughs> I think the amount of creativity that's going to come out of just coronavirus in general is going to be ridiculous. Like the amount of time people have, you know, to actually ponder their thoughts and consider actually what they really want. Um, and just get away from the the busyness of the world and all in their job that they might not like that much or you know the lifestyle that they're living is that they didn't like so much like that that's going to change people's mindsets i reckon yeah it will it's funny i've actually i mean i've moved home from being in college and come you know spending a solid two weeks of christmas at home every year yeah i've been home for eight weeks and loving it and getting to spend time (laughs) proper time with my family so That I mean, that's different for me. I'm sure a lot of people are experiencing that too. Um, that's that's more like social and societal change. Also, oh man, one what other thing? The um, so what should I say? Was up health and housing were the mm. two things in the election. Health yeah. is the other one. Uh, you know, back to I mean, we're t- talking a little bit about throwing Ireland's sort of embracing the capitalist system in the. Uh, <laughs> throwing it in the space, yeah. Uh, you know, from a from a capitalist point of view, like nurses have basically got Ireland by the balls right now. Yeah, it's like the perfect time to go on strike, mm-hmm. yeah, or they do. threaten to go on strike, or say, "Hey, do you want to bump our wages up fifty percent?" Yeah. And just, you know? <laughs> I, I think a time like this has really shown that like the nurses and just, just healthcare workers in general in Ireland are just completely underpaid and under-resourced. Um, I mean, especially nurses though, you know, cause they do, they do a lot of, a lot of stuff. Yeah. The heavy lifting. Yeah. They do a lot of the yeah, heavy I lifting. I mean, if I was head of nurses union and I think, I think they have got pay increases and stuff and they've worked out stuff about like paying the student nurses and stuff. Mm. But like, I mean, purely based on, I mean, they have the worst chance of catching the bloody disease. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They have, so, they have a lot to lose. Like, sure, there is. Like the amount of they, healthcare yeah, workers I that mean, have died around based the world. On the extra, yeah, purely based on the extra risk they're assuming just by showing up for work. Like you should, should be, you should be, you should be, so you should be paid for risk factor. Like the people work yeah. on oil rigs are paid for risk. People work from heights, they're paid for risk. Why, why can't Absolutely. nurses get paid for risk? Um, well because they didn't have a rampaging virus in their workplace before now so uh, I, but yeah I think as far as I know they have got some sort of an increase uh, I'd be I'd be holding out for a lot more no, yeah. no matter what the figure was um, if you think anyway <laughs> yeah yeah I mean this is you know I, I mean it's all very well saying oh the nurses are our heroes the frontline workers are our heroes I remember seeing a thing, it was like an interview with the um, emergency medical tech in, what are they? They're basically paramedics in yeah. New York, right? And he had an interview and he was like, yeah, I mean, I really like all the support. It's been great. Like day to day, I've had loads of people like cheering even as I walk past, getting loads of free pizza. Um, 
but man, I mean, I'd love like medical insurance. Oh. That'd be great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like a paramedic dealing with coronavirus victims. He's just a medical insurance because like <laughs> that's just like not included with the job. So he's like, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if we could get that. I mean, America is this like hyper dystopian thing. Yeah. Um, it's like a worse version of all all of that. I mean, oh man, I know. I mean, been, uh, some of the stuff you've seen over there as well, and I think I don't know what I was listening to or read the other day. It was saying that like during a time like this, when you know the whole world is faced with something like even just like a war or fucking you know obviously a pandemic uh, right now, but like everybody's flaws are shown, you know, pretty nakedly. Um, well, I think so. Unfortunately, first of all really unfortunately uh i'm planning to move to america in the next in the next year and so i actually have to pay attention to this like sack of <laughs> crazed bullshit that's going on yeah all right but for the rest of the world there's two things with america there is its culture and there is its economy pretty much everyone pays a lot of attention to its culture because its culture is crazy and spread all around the world to the rest of the world america's culture doesn't matter that much mm -hmm. just it just doesn't all nah. those things are happening in america yeah. america's all fucked up because of it all those crazy polarized society doesn't exist in the rest of the world outside of america thank you thankfully yeah. in speaking generally and mm -hmm. um, what does matter is how all that affects its economy because so right so america so america has us dollar that's have you heard of like that's the world's reserve yeah, that's, currency that's the federal res like the, the reserve and all that kind of stuff so that everything goes off the american dollar right so out of every hundred let's say let's say out of all the money spent in the world mm. how much of it is spent in dollars isn't like one tenth of it keep going more oh shit more half or a quarter half holy shit really half half of the world's money is in dollars whoa all right so what happens to america's economy really matters yeah okay what's happening as, to its as, economy at the as moment? was ev evident back in fucking 2008 <laughs> as was evidence in 2008 what, well what's interesting about 2008 is it's you know it was referred to as a liquidity crisis all right so what that means is like the companies actually could have been okay everything they could have kept the whole you know it's like a juggler keeping the balls in the air mm -hmm. right he's got two hands and there's three balls as long as he keeps juggling that's okay but if someone calls him out and says <laughs> catch all the balls one in each hand He's only got two hands. Yeah. So they could have kept the whole thing going. It was just that one person stopped paying. Then the next person doesn't get paid. They can't pay. And then dominoes yeah, keep falling. Domino and then effect, yeah. banks go bust and people lose their jobs. So back in, so if you look at the stock market, um, basically went into free fall uh, at the start of March. So the American stock market, but yeah. as we said, half the world's money is there. So worth paying attention to. Mm -hmm. Um and basically people started to worry that that whole thing was going to happen again but whereas in 2008 it took until 2009 for them to basically pass a was a, a new bill a new act they printed money yeah as they, did. they mm. printed money here it took them less than a month to print money mm. right and it's funny if you see the actual um announcement in the interview with the guy and they talk about how it was done. And he's like, uh, oh, we uh, incremented the Federal Reserve balance by uh, electronic means on the thing point. Because like, they literally typed in zeros. That, that, that's what they did. You don't even have to print the money anymore because we live in a, a digital age. Yeah, they, they typed in zeros and more hun like trillions of dollars existed. You know? Yeah. <laughs> how crazy is that? That is pretty wild. <laughs> um, that is amazing. But the, <laughs> but the effect is that all the companies have money, people have money. Away we go. The world keeps turning. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, 
And since then, you know, they've announced more and more that we're going to print more and more money. Mm. So what's right. going to happen now that coronavirus is kind of reaping America? What do you think is... Hey, 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 hey. Peter, you're getting very close to asking the most interesting question. I know everyone's fucking thinking of it, though. <laughs> you're getting very close. Okay, all right. So but, but what's, what's the context in it? All right. So before this, before coronavirus hit, okay, what was, was, what was America doing? Was it being a nice a nice responsible accountant, you know, the, the traditional, the, the Jew stereotype was nah. it balancing its books. I think they were aggravating. It putting away they could. In, how, how much have they got in their savings accounts? Yeah. They, they, didn't they bail out the like agricultural community, like quite recently too. And within this year, I think, didn't they something to do, know, but they did something ridiculous anyway, but yeah, they, they weren't well, acting well, responsibly. Question. <laughs> the question, the question, Peter, how much, uh, how much of a surplus or deficit is America making there? Are they, have they got 10% extra than what they're spending? Or are they 10% below? I would say 10% below. They were 10% below. And then coronavirus hit. What are they at now? Oh, this year. 25% below? No? 30. What? Right? Yeah, they're projecting to be 30% below. So America's thing is, oh, is it 30? It's like a 20 or 30 trillion is their, uh, is their GDP. Hmm. But they're 30% down on that. All right? Yeah. So what was their debt? What was America's mortgage that it already owed? Oh, that's astonishing. I, I, I think someone rattled that off to me recently. What is it? You definitely have it. <laughs> Come on. It was roughly, roughly the same as their GDP. So tw- 20 trillion is their GDP. They were 20 trillion in debt. Already. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. You look at someone and, you know, you, P- you Peter Malloy, you're, let's say, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to make guesses at your salary, Peter. I'm going <laughs> to put you at a, a nice stable minimum wage person. Uh, you're making 22 grand a year. You're just living on the edge. You're set. You're spending 22 grand a year as well. I mean, in this case, it's America it's spending 24 grand, so they make it 22. But it's also 22 grand in debt. Hmm. You're also 22 grand in debt. When when do you think you're paying that back? Never. All right. Well, what are, what are your options? All right. Get so, a new job. <laughs> <laughs> number one. Number one, you could, uh, so uh, options for countries that are in debt. So Ireland, Ireland's in debt. Ireland's in absolutely loads of debt. Yeah, heavy 200, debt. 200 billion, something like that. Something close like to our GDP yeah. as well. We're, we're like America. We haven't been very, well, you know, 2008 happened, basically. Yeah, we bailed which, out banks. Yeah, so we that probably was, shouldn't that have, but that's that a different debt. story. <laughs> different story. All right. So what are, what are our options? Uh, we could raise a whole load of taxes. So we did, we did that. We kind of did that in America, but or we kind of did that in 2008 to 2012. Yeah, austerity but came in. That's because, yeah, the austerity, that was kind of the condition of us getting the loan in the first yeah. place. Mm. But anyway, that was a lot, a lot of other things around, around there. Yeah. But So you, you could raise taxes. How, do, do people like that? Do, is that popular? Does that get politicians reelected? It sure doesn't. How do, how do you think Americans feel about higher federal taxes? Pretty, well, pretty yeah, strong. Yeah, yeah or nay. Yay, gun, yay or nay? Gun in hand, nay. <laughs> gun in hand, yay is a good answer. <laughs> All right. Uh, op- option, option two. All right. You can default. You can say, we're not, we're not paying. We're, we're, we're not paying anymore. All right. So that's pretty close to what Greece happened to Greece in 2011. They yeah. really sent the euro over, yeah. over the edge financially. So they're like, holy yeah. shit, one of the euro countries, which are whole, you know, straighten your tie real respectable Europeans aren't paying back their money. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. you mean, you do that, you default on your debt. Uh, no one's loaning your money again. Remember that 5% we were talking about in Ireland? Mm-hmm. They'd be like, we want 20%, 30% yeah. a year. If you, if you're getting any money off us, if you default, because you haven't paid people back before. Yeah. No one's loaning them money. Right. Yeah. So why would you do that? Option three. Huh? Got that uh, computer there that you can type zeros into. 
What do you, what, what do you reckon? Option one, two, or three? Uh, the Americans would definitely do three anyway. They're definitely going to print more money. Just start bashing that zero. Yeah, just man. Start bashing the zero. I just imagine okay. Donald Trump's finger on itself. <laughs> it's going well. It's going well. It's going well. <laughs> um, yeah. So what? So what's looking likely? I mean, I don't see out of the three options. I don't see America paying back its debt. I don't see a lot of countries paying back its debt. Oh. Don't see Ireland paying back its debt. But that begs the question. Like, there's definitely going to be a recession, I would say. But is there going to be a depression? Well, why would there be a depression? Why would I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, lo- why would there be a dep- uh, recession? Yeah. <sighs> it's a good question. Okay, here, we're going, we're going, here, we're, we're going we're gonna to work around to it. Okay. All right. So, everybody's in debt. Mm-hmm. Every bash in the zero, right? America owns the printing press, but Europe, you know, those euro bonds, you've been hearing about that? Then yeah. yeah, the bonds. Euro yeah. bonds? Yeah. Right, that, that's the printing press going as well. Printing press is just racking out euros, mm-hmm. right? So, what does that mean? If you print money, what does that do? Uh, doesn't it deflate or like deflate a currency? Puts it up, oh, inflation. Wait other way if there's more euros around if someone else is just handing out euros that means your ah, euro yeah oh excuse that me you yeah. own, that was a brain fart yeah inflation worth less yeah it's worth less no worries inflation you, yeah. so normally if you have zero interest rates that would encourage massive inflation mm-hmm. all right historically interest rates have been up at like six seven eight percent normal mm-hmm Worldwide, we've been sitting at like, you know, Europe, Europe's Europe's like two percent lower than America, but like, tradition, yeah, you know, two or three percent over mm-hmm. the last few years, and they've been trying to push them back up because what happens when you get a recession? What you do is you just you drop interest rates, and then everybody spends more money because it's free money, yeah. right? Back to that whole borrowing money for free when half a percent interest rate, two percent inflation, mm-hmm. you freaking. You know, you borrow, you borrow the money, you spend the money, economy kick, picks up. Yeah. All right. So what they were trying to do is put interest rates up over the last 10 years during this historically long, yay, big, long recovery from the financial crash. But they tried to do it in 20, 2016 and everything, you know, if you're imagining it's like fucking cycler pedaling along, it's just, just kind of wobbled. And I went, whoa, what was that? All the markets didn't like it. Everything went down, you know, countries stopped producing as much. You know, so, you so know, explain, explain to me, got ex- a little bit. Yeah. Explain to me what happened in 2016 then. So they put they put um they put interest rates up. And when interest rates go up, it means that rather than loaning your money out to someone risky, what you could do is just stick it in the bank or give it to a you know, give it to a government government source for money. And you get a guaranteed, you know, interest rates are four percent. You get four percent a year back on your money. On your money, mm. all right. Yeah. If inflation's two percent, that's profit. Whoop de do. Yeah. So you'll do that, all right? Mm-hmm. If inflation is, or sorry, if interest rates are half a percent, and you get half a percent, or you get negative interest rates, mm-hmm. why would you put your money in the bank? You'd lose money by putting your money in the bank. So what happened was when they put interest rates up. Everybody went, whoo, I'm, uh, I'm not borrowing any money. I'm not spending my money. I'm sticking it in the bank and I'm leaving it there. I'm going to save. Yeah. And so everything stopped. Yeah. And they were like, oh, that's not good. Let's drop interest rates and start it all over again. Which is why when something <laughs> bad happened, like coronavirus, they had to drop them. And you hear they dropped them from like 1%. And so that's why you hear negative interest rates because you can't go below zero. So they went minus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. But that's just how th- things work in, in general. Mm. Um, so back to what happens if you print money. What, so normally you have high interest rates. You drop, you drop the interest rates, inflation goes up. You, incre- you increase the interest rates. People are like, oh, I just saved my money. Yeah. And you stop inflation. Yeah. Okay? If you print money, you get 
hyperinflation. So that's why you remember hearing the um, stories of Zimbabwe, people carrying around uh, yeah, literally like full of money to pay for money. Yeah. Yeah, pay for bed. Venezuela over the last year. Okay. They've had they're, hyperinflation. They're in, the, they're in the same position. Okay. Yeah, at the moment, they're, you can't buy food. Whoa. You, know, you get, you get, so let's say you get like a grand at the st- in your paycheck at the start of the month, all right? And you can buy some bread. You can buy like 10 loaves of bread with your thousand euro. By the end of the month, it'll only buy one loaf of bread. Yeah. So what do you do? You buy them all at the start of the month. So everyone's food hoarding because the inflation's going crazy. Yeah. Um, Fuck, far out. And so, I mean, if I had to guess, I would... You know, I mean, things probably won't get that crazy because it's America, things are big and controlled and the rest of the world, and it's like a whole globalized system. It's not one like country. It's standalone entity, yeah, it's all tied. But what we'll like, because we have the negative interest rates, we'll see. Like, basically, everyone's like looking around at the economy going like, what the fuck, why hasn't this taken off? Why aren't we already at huge inflation? Yeah. All right? And it points to a weakness in the whole world economy. Um, they're expecting, I mean, they're expecting to print of money and inflation just shoots up, mm-hmm. but it hasn't, right? And so what will probably happen is once we come out of this coronavirus, I mean, it's one of a, a whole load of options, but we will get some form of very fast inflation where you get the dip and the curve into the recession and on the curve out, as you climb out, people go, you know, you heard the phrase, it's going up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pile in everybody whoo, and mm. that curve gets really steep and you get really big inflation okay and so then you'll like to see, see higher interest rates and all that. And interestingly what that means is that in the next couple of months what you will likely see is the last time for a very very long time that you will have very very low interest rates and uh cheap houses so next year if you were if you were to buy and you could lock in like a 2% mortgage, mm. right? You could lock in a 2% mortgage on a house at, at whatever price. And if hyperinflation happens, you know, hyperinflation doesn't just apply to food. It applies everything. to everything that's real. Yeah. Everything that's, ta- everything that's, that's why, tangible. Yeah. You know, gold is the original tangible one. Mm. Um. And so then your house could be worth a hundred times if you see hyperinflation, be worth a hundred times what it's worth or what the, what it cost. But you're, you've got a 30 year mortgage. You're still just paying 2% every year. You just, um, open, you just open up a loads of people's mind just going bang. Yeah. 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 Um, what I, I mean, what, what, it, what it means is that even if there isn't hyperinflation, you're still probably going to be okay. Yeah. Um, I think thing, I think I honestly think things will be okay. Like I'm an optimist though. Well, I mean, throughout that, so there's like lots of tools that you can use to so so the whole idea is that it's like it's like it's like a rigged game, right? The whole letting people work out markets and sell things and buy things is rigged mm-hmm. by governments because governments are like the fucking puppeteers pulling the puppet strings. Yeah. Because they've got interest rates that they can put push up and that will slow things down and everyone's like running through mud and everything slows down and they've got the money printing that they can turn up and make yeah, things yeah, yeah. speed up again mm-hmm. all right but what happens is if you use them too much and you tug on the strings too much this way and that way and this way and that way eventually they might you know the strings might get too long and then the puppets might stop reacting and you'll be tugging away at the strings and printing money and changing interest rates and nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. And that, that's a dangerous. So, that's so dangerous, yeah. That that is that is where the danger lies. But I mean these are these are all scenarios that could play out. Doesn't mean they're the most likely scenario. Yeah. Um yeah. but you know that 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 danger of people going from all right, starting nineteen hundred, people are just using coins, bringing gold, lugging gold around. They're like, this is a bit inconvenient. Let's start off and be like, all right, what's, you know, what, I mean, what was the original idea of a dollar? One dollar. One dollar was like, I don't really know what the history of the dollar is. 
Right, so one dollar entitled you to go to the bank at Fort Knox in America and get, it was like an ounce of gold. Okay. That's what it was, or it might have been like a fraction of an ounce of gold. Okay. All right, so that's what a dollar was. It was just easier to carry around a dollar, a paper note, paper note yeah. than it was to carry around gold. But they were like, there is a big old stack of gold in Fort Knox sitting there that that is what this dollar is worth. It is worth a fraction of that. Yeah. And in 1970, but is this, does they the dollar, it. yeah, so when, where does it change from like being like one dollar is equal to this? Like when, when they start printing more money, doesn't that like decrease the amount of gold you can actually get for a dollar or what way does that work? Yes, it, yes, yes, it does. Mm. Yes, it does. But in 1970, so you basically, they had to have whatever it was like, 10% of whatever amount of dollars were out there and that they said they'd give gold for it. They have to have 10% of that gold sitting there in the vault. All right. Mm -hmm. And the same was true for all countries in all mm -hmm. currencies, whatever money you had, if we had, if we had our economy was worth whatever, but 10, a hundred billion euro, mm -hmm. we had to have 10 billion euro worth of gold sitting in a vault. And in 1970, they were like, yes, this isn't working so much anymore. We're just going to, you know, we'd like to do some other things financially. So you can't get gold for your money anymore. But it's, it's, this is the government's money. The government says this is money. So accept it. They regulate like what it's valued at, essentially. Well. But I'm, what I mean by that is they're the ones who like dignify it with value rather than the gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say this is part of the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy runs on U.S. dollars, same way Europe does. The European yeah, yeah, economy yeah, yeah, yeah. runs on mm. euros. That it is worth it is worth a fraction of the U.S. economy, effectively, yeah. mm. kind of, but not <laughs> really. And the more money you print, and the less that if you're holding a dollar, or if you're, I mean, mm. you're actually kind of there because like euros are actually. You know, weight or whatever well, like, like if you're holding if you're holding a dollar all right yeah. and if toilet paper starts to get cheaper than dollars and you start to be like all right i might as well use this dollar to wipe my ass as, as opposed to <laughs> buy toilet paper all right people start to lose confidence in the oh, value yeah. of yeah. what money is no, yeah, and then it, yeah. that's when inflation gets out of control and when inflation gets out of control, what do you go to the real tangible assets? And back to gold all over again. People buy gold. And but does that, that brings me to a question I actually wanted to ask you. Did, what do you think about investing in Bitcoin right now? Because apparently it's going to go through a halving soon. Oh, man. Bitcoin. Yeah. All right. So what, what, what are we saying? Inflation goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. It's quite likely. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like print, money printing happens. So what's the real tangible value of, of Bitcoin? I mean, right now it's been stable around kind of five to eight grand. Yeah. What does it entitle to you to? What can you buy with it? I don't really understand Bitcoin that much, to be honest. That's why I'm asking you. Maybe you know a little bit more. Bitcoin is, see, Bitcoin is crypto, and all cryptocurrency tests the limits of what we agree money to be. You can't trade a Bitcoin for whatever ounce of gold, mm -hmm. right? Which means in 1970, Bitcoin doesn't work as even existing. Yeah, but technically, if you, you, technically you, you get your money out from Bitcoin and then buy gold out of it. Inadvertently, you can buy gold with Bitcoin. But no, what are you buying gold with? You're buying with money that you've gotten for the value of Bitcoin. Yeah, but you're buying it with the money. So you're using Bitcoin to get, again, we're talking American, so yeah. to get dollars. Yeah. And so with those dollars, you can buy, you can yeah. buy gold, but you can't buy it with the Bitcoin, yeah. all right? And the only way you get those dollars, all right, is by selling the Bitcoin to someone else. Yeah, trading because it. Someone else, mm. someone else thinks it's going to be worth more, mm. all right? Mm -hmm. So it's all based on it's going to go down, it's going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to go up. Yeah. It's betting on it, like. Betting. Yeah. It's just all these things are just fancy forms of betting based on nothing. Yeah. You know, you don't own it. You don't own anything. You know, if you own 
a piece of land and someone says, oh, it's worth nothing. You can go stand in your piece of land, rip all your clothes off, stand there naked and go, this is mine. No one can stop me from doing this. I own this. You yeah. can build a castle on that land if you want to. <laughs> you own it, all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can go <laughs> piss into the wind on your land. You can do whatever you want. It's worth it. Is, it is a thing, all right? Bitcoin's mm. not worth anything other than what someone will pay for it. Yeah. Or the idea of Bitcoin, what it's, whatever people are feeling on it on the day. <laughs> exactly. Um, meaning it's a bet. It might go, it might go up, mm. but, but you don't know that. Anyone that says that they know that is lying. Do you think the price of um? Do you think the price of airlines are going to go like skyrocket, or what do you think is going to happen there? Uh, hey, well, there's um, talk pulling back to tourism. How willing are people going to be to? Because like it's because for... like I'm considering coming home in a few months, but then I'm like I'm looking at some of the prices, and it's literally like, you know, I looked for next month, and it's like still at like five thousand dollars to get home. Like, well, yeah, you know, how willing are people going to be in the next two years while coronavirus still exists? Well, it hasn't been eradicated. You know, the whole thing about this is that it's so silent. It's not like you can look at someone. You know, someone has sunburn. You look at them and they're red. You're like, they have sunburn. Someone has coronavirus. You don't know for a week, like. Yeah. Totally uh, nice. So, how willing are people going to be to sit in a confined room with a hundred other strangers pushed in side by side, breathing recycled air? Yeah. Probably not that willing, or probably <laughs> not that not that happy about doing it. And so, you know, I think Ryanair issued. A, basically said in their results this year that they were they expected it to take um at least two years to get passengers back to normal levels or current right. levels okay. and, and you know current current levels are are peak peak ever you know we're at the highest you know globalization where airplanes are flying all around the world ever yeah um so there's the so warren buffett who's like the most famous investor from the last 80 years or, I guess yeah. probably not he's 89 so whatever he <laughs> started in his 20s probably yeah. started in the 60s um so he they his company had their annual meeting next year and they've got uh so let's so let's take apple as your your value of what a big company is remember apple and amazon had that competition where they were trying to breach a trillion dollar company they were trying to be the first company in the world to be a trill worth a trillion dollars. No, I actually did. I didn't see that. No. Yeah, yeah, that happened. It was like last year. One of them went up, and they went down back below it, or whatever. Okay. Just depending yeah. on the stock price or whatever. Um, but so biggest company in the world basically is a tr is a trillion dollars, right? A thousand billion. So Buffett's company is half that five five worth five hundred billion. Mm -hmm. All right, pretty big company, but. They're sitting on $140 billion in just cash, like cash in hand. Whoa. All right. So at the meeting, it was actually like pretty exciting. Everyone yesterday was like, so hey, 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 like, what you buy? You, you, you know, you had $140 billion and the market just crashed. What are we doing? What you buy? <laughs> and, uh, what he said was uh, nothing. Didn't we, didn't, we, didn't we like to look at anything? Yeah. And he also said, but I did sell all my airlines. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and so he said, wow. you know, e even if, you know, he's known as the biggest long term, not focused on short term at all. Yeah, pretty good at looking at long, what's going to yeah. happen in the next 20, 30 years and not caring about what happens day to day he's like um, he's like a type of dude who makes one decision a year and it profits some like ridiculous amounts yeah exactly he's like you know what what's this thing he's like just because someone quotes you the price of your company every day doesn't mean you have to look at it look Pretty at the much. price of your company once a year it's a great way to think about <laughs> you know? something as well like you know um anyway so what he said was uh yeah airlines have suffered a low probability event that changes changes the market um for a very long time and even if it even if in three years they get back to 80 percent of the volumes that they were at there's still too many planes yeah the, they're, still the not planes to, for, they're still not back to baseline well the planes for 100 percent of the volume are still there 
So loads of people are going to be sitting around with a load of planes, or loads of companies are going to be sitting around with a load of planes who don't want to do it. Yeah. Right. Um, meaning, yeah, airlines are, airlines kind of fucked. Basically. Yeah, yeah. But, and you know, I, I heard people again, talking, again, about, again, talking about, like, buying stocks in airline and all that, but then I'm like, yeah, I'm, well, I mean, the, I mean, the, st- I mean, the stocks have dropped, so they're valued at less. Mm-hmm. It's are they valued at what the future of the airline will be? Well, no one knows. You gotta, mm-hmm. you gotta wait and see. Are they likely to grow? I mean, there's probably likely to be only bad news for two or three years. In ten years, they might be worth more. True. Depends on what price. If you're, you're willing to pay the long game, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, like, the reason airlines have got a kicking is that. And um, basically, all the all the free cash that they've that they've had in the last like five years, because they've been making loads of money when volumes have been really high, especially American mm. ones. Yeah, and they've they've been in, like loads of debt, right? Yeah. So they still owe loads of money, but like not not yeah. You know, people are okay waiting a little while to get it. Yeah, no need to pay interest every year. And so what they've been doing with all their profits is buying their own stock back. And so. If you buy your own stock back, it's like the opposite of printing, printing shares. Yeah, you're not getting any. Capital, it means that like, each yeah. each it means that each one is worth more. Mm-hmm. So each stock that every, that people do own. Yeah. So if there was fifty percent and it went down to ten percent, those ten percent stocks are going to be worth oh, like a shit yeah, ton more yeah. than what it like you know the amount of the other ones are. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and so, but basically, the way they spent all their money on that, and it doesn't actually make the company more valuable. It just makes the individual share more valuable, and it means that when something bad happens, yeah, they can sell their share. They don't again. have any money. Well, no, I mean they don't have any money to do it. So, I mean, so what are their options? They can issue more shares. Yeah, exactly. What that so it fucks over all the, the it people fucks who over all the people who own sh- who own shares. Yeah, but again, they're investors. They saw yeah, it's business. They saw a comp. They saw a company that wasn't saving its profits, didn't have any cash in its hand, was buying back shares. They liked that. They assumed the risk. Yeah, that's, that's the risk they take, yeah. Too bad, yeah. you know? Um, and so, which is actually, you know, gets onto like the whole story of bailouts and the efficacy of bailouts and like the ethics around it and should tax hold, you know, taxpayers' money be used to bail out these companies. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, I don't know, my opinion is, well, yes, at the right price. You know, you don't just give them give them 500 million euro or 500 million dollars and say, there you go, have a nice time. Yeah. I, I hope, hope your business does well. Yeah. You go, all right, I want 80% of your company for 500 billion. Mm-hmm. And they go, that's ridiculous. We'll give you 10% for 500 billion. Yeah. Or fi- 500 million. Like, mm. Nah, seventy five percent for five hundred million. You play a game and see. Well, how much do you really need the money? And who's going to give you that money for less? And if the price is too high, then you let them fail. And it's, you know, oh, but then we don't have any airlines. Mm. Ah, well, you five hundred million there. Set up your own airline. I just heard a load of staff lot that lost their job and would love a job at an airline. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> set up a government airline. <laughs> So whatever whatever works best for for whatever price, but I mean the issue was I mean Ireland did that with uh, with its banks yeah. where you know Ireland owns thirty percent of Airb you, you because it needed that much money I would argue yeah, it's a maybe it should have got maybe it should have gotten ninety five percent from the amount that it paid and probably not paid back all the debts or yeah. maybe just set up a new bank probably just actually set up a new bank I mean like here was a, a new bank and loan out money to whoever needs money and. Fuck all the people who invest in the map. Yeah. But definitely. anyway, anyway, anyway. That's a different story. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so an interesting part of this is actually the you know, getting getting on to how printing money works with coronavirus is that, you know, it's fine, man. I, I see and you know, deals with crazy Americans as well. Uh you see Americans pr- um protesting against the lockdowns have you got that news over there yeah bro it just looks ridiculous like people marching on fucking like kind of local yeah. representing buildings right. and, and, so, and oh. so that it's a um so they're protesting in the name of individual freedoms yeah isn't that yeah, like that's, that's, isn't that like their first amendment or something like that i don't i don't know 
Yeah. Like, but anyway, go on. Just like, let's let's from a common sense point, not come on from a like a legal thing. Oh also, yeah. I'm, hilarious. Yeah. Also, hilarious. I'll talk to you about a different a, a different time. I do the Second Amendment, the one the right to bear arms one. Yeah. But do, do, doesn't actually say that. Uh, it's it's really funny. It's really hilariously worded. Okay, we'll, we'll cover that. We'll cover that in another any, one. Any, sure. any, anyway, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, the protest. So, what's actually been incredible to me in all this is that during the coronavirus, the government has said, you know, so uh, right, nineteen eighties, I think called Hong Kong flu, hit the UK. UK yeah. just gone through a recession. Uh, 20,000 people a week were dying at the height. 20,000 was the worst week that they had. So, mm-hmm. for example, 20,000 is the total deaths so far in the UK. Yeah. But 20,000 died in one week from Hong Kong flu. Okay. UK government was like, sorry guys, we're, we're just, just coming out of a session. Carry on. You know, mm. those who die, die. Life, life goes on. Sounds pretty ruthless. Right. Pretty ruthless, right? So in the 21st century, in 2020, the fact that we live in a, con- in a country and that a lot of countries in Europe and uh, America are willing to say, okay, guys, please stop working, stop producing stuff that will generate taxes for the, co- for the country. Go home, sit on your ass and watch Netflix, and we'll pay you to do that. That is absolutely bonkers. Like, like from a, an individual rights of the people point of view, mm. that is like the most insane victory ever that people have the power over politicians, over the authority to do that. You know, I mean, in an author, in a authori- ugh, authoritarian <laughs> state, uh-huh. right, where the king's yeah. in charge, he goes, you know, he kicks his well, finger. What's the uh, the king the the Lord Farquaad line from Shrek? Some of you may die, but that is a sacrifice I'm, I'm willing to make. I'm willing to make, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's the response that you could have expected if that happened that did happen in the 1980s. Mm-hmm. But we are should feel incredibly privileged to live in countries that are rich enough to that we have the system that we can do this and we can pay our population to do it. What, what, where it does become an issue um, is the se- when second and third waves most likely will happen. Um, they're already talking in Ireland about tapering off the welfare payment um, because it costs a lot of money to pay everybody in Ireland a normal wage, yeah. better, better than the dole, better than social welfare yeah. to do nothing. It costs no. a lot of money. Yeah. And we're, we're in the fortunate position that we can borrow money for very cheaply, but it can't go on forever. Mm. Conversely, in countries like India, a lot of countries in Africa, what are they going to do? Yeah, development they companies have, are they, really going to suffer. Think they have like you know ten percent of their GDP to spend on just like paying people to sit at home? No, well certainly but, not. Well, this this is it. They're not going to suffer e- economically because the government cannot afford to shut down, mm-hmm. and they don't have enough people power to say no, we need to shut down. So the government's like, well, we don't have any money. We can't shut down and pay you. So you want to go home, sit at home and starve because you don't have any money or do you want to keep working? Mm. And what I see is most like, the most likely effect. And you know, this is like what was happening in Russia under Putin's nose, but he was kind of just ignoring it for a while. You know, they were just like living in denial. Let's carry on. Let's just carry on. Those yeah. who die, die. You know, we've got a crazy high birth rate those bodies, those worker bees will be replaced, you know? So Mm. economically, those countries probably won't be hit because what's the death rate in African, what's the death rate in third world and developing countries? It's normally pretty high. They have tons of diseases. There's malaria killing people every year. In first world developed, yeah, first world developed countries, we're not used to something that can increase our death rate by, you know, 50%. exponentially yeah well not ex- yeah i mean that's that's the danger at the moment where it's at so looking it up to put it in perspective in ireland normally two and a half thousand people die a month mm. okay from like old age just generally right? yeah yeah um and so we've had 1200 die so far mm-hmm. which is 
1,200 people dying is really bad. Yeah. Totally bad. But yeah. It's not a massive percentage of our population. Dying. Yeah. So and like a scheme of things a, like, done, yeah, yeah. We've done a really job. Good, so at the moment, things aren't really bad. We've mm. done a really good job of containing the virus. Yeah, for sure. The issue is what could happen if we didn't contain it. Yeah. You know, that's the scary thing. And um, similarly in America, America is getting absolutely flogged for its deaths and stuff. Normally, 233,000 people die every month in America. Isn't that such a big number? I couldn't wow. believe it when I looked it up. I was like, but like Holy shit, man, you're talking about like, number. what do what, what we have? Like 4.9 or 4.8 million? What do they have? Like, how, how many yeah, million live in America? 300, 330. Yeah. Ish. So like, but so normally they have so sim- similar percentage of the po- so it's like one basic like sort of like one percent of the population yeah so it's kind of nearly relative yeah. Year. yeah right but so they have 233,000 die usually every month but they've had 60,000 deaths total okay which is you know an extra an extra quarter on top of what they usually 25 percent on what they normally have but some of those that are die are like the old people that would die Anyway, that, so like yeah. relatively like you know it's like at the moment things aren't in nuclear war you know bubonic plague mm. wiped out like a fifth of the population you know mm. this is taking I did, out i did see a statistic recently that said that more americans have died in coronavirus in the vietnam war yeah, yeah. so like sixty thousand people died in the vietnam war mm. But normally, two hundred and thirty-three thousand Americans die every month. So it's like lies, damn lies, and statistics. I know. What what what's telling what you for get, me? What is do you get there with those? Like like what do you think, Len? Is like so what what's telling for me is that um, this is being compared to like bubonic plague, mm-hmm. right? Um, bubonic plague wiped out roughly like one, depending on as a few waves between one in three and one in five people. It wiped out something like. 20% of the world's population. At the moment, this is, this is killing an extra half of 1%, uh, a quarter of 1% of the okay. world's population. So it's not close on the scale. As, as the bubonic plague, but it could get there. <sighs> That's, well, it looks like the death rate is something like one percent if everybody mm. or something like between one and three percent depends on if there's then, actually man, any, see, any hospitals left you see the likes you see the likes of you see the likes of new zealand now and they're nearly at a place where they've completely eradicated it yeah you know? new zealand's pretty much it looks like i mean you're pretty much the most isolated country in the world it seems like you've done the best in yeah the world no, for sure it. for sure but i think it's a it's a combination of a few things like yes we have that, that after having that like you know, the positive of being a really isolated place in there, not a lot of travel comes through it. Um, the people were here, came back, and then they were isolated straight away. And yeah, because, but we did, it was a different timeline. So it was like a week after, we were like a week um, after kind of where Ireland was at in terms of like when the lockdown and all that came in. So New Zealand, I think we're able to look at Europe and go, okay, lads, we need to get on this fucking fast as. And they had that extra week to plan. And what that did, I think, is allowed the um, Jacinda Ardens to come together and actually make a proper solid plan of like once community transmission is like a thing in New Zealand, we just completely go into lockdown. Yeah. And that's it. Because we're going into lockdown anyway, you know? Almost almost like having a plan was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, seems like a basic thing. But I know, I know. Having, having a plan rather than... Oh, we'll, just, we'll see how many cases and deaths we get, and then. Yeah. But you can't run off. You can't run off that because I think what just what what Jacinda did is she looked at the numbers and she saw like okay, so these are the studies that are done. So she probably looked at the science behind it. Whereas, you know, the likes of the UK looked at their place and that whatever study that they looked at wasn't what they were projecting. So they were they came at the same thing of like okay, let's just let's do herd men or herd like um calling whoever dies dies and we'll go forward like that business as usual but obviously they're paying for that now yeah i mean <laughs> i mean whatever you do don't reverse the strategies like don't don't say we'll try to get loads of people infected 
oh no, we'll try and get nobody infected. Yeah. Like, that's, oh, man. that's like the worst thing you can do. It's like, oh yeah, um, I have my homework done. Oh wait, I don't have it as, done. But as I was saying, despite all the fuck ups, things aren't really, really bad mm. yet here. Yeah. And it seems like the peaks have been hit if lockdowns persist. Continue. So, but so yeah. like, you know, we've got like, the main thing is we've got off that exponential curve. You know, like a lot of the projections were for hundreds of thousands of people to die from this yeah. per country. Mm-hmm. You know, like it was like 250,000 in the UK. You know, you're getting more towards the millions mark in the in the US. Yeah. That hasn't happened because of the lockdown. So it's really good that lockdowns have, have yeah. happened. Yeah, definitely. The problem is countries can't keep functioning in lockdown. Mm. So you need to find a long-term solution. So at the moment, yeah. we're going less for you know we're kind of stepping away from the holy shit stop people dying to Mm. holy shit find a way that countries can start functioning again without loads of people dying and without sending that rate skyrocketing again Mm. so whether that's a vaccine whether that's crazy much testing whether that's existing in a society through with like an a massive amount of social distancing like just like built into every day Mm. whether that's built you know, I mean, I definitely think you're going to have to wear masks in work for the next, until the coronavirus is eradicated for the next year. Yeah. I think when, if there's any sort of an office, you're going to need to be wearing a if mask. If you even working in an office, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, any sort of an indoor thing. Goodbye indoor sports events. Goodbye. Just. Um, goodbye venues, like live live music you can just watching a ga match sports like, goodbye that and yeah watching a rugby match i mean it'll be everything online you just you just won't be able to do things mm. with crowds of thousands of people anymore or right, not for the next year or two mm. beyond that who knows i think um, that's um that's a great place to finish it. i think man we should probably like come back in a few weeks and see where we're at and have a few more conversations what do you think yeah 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 <laughs> see you see you. yeah Lots of JJ. See, see if any of the stuff we've been sprouting has been any way reasonable. Definitely, definitely, bro.